Thank you very much, uh, Chairman McGovern. Thank you, uh, Chairman Thompson, Ranking Member Cole. Thank you very much. Um, as you all know, uh, we are entering a critical stage of this investigation. We have learned that President Trump and his team were warned in advance and repeatedly that the efforts they undertook to overturn the 2020 election would violate the law and our Constitution. They were warned that January 6th could and likely would turn violent. And they were told repeatedly by our state and federal courts, by our Justice Department, and by the agencies of our intelligence community that the allegations of widespread fraud sufficient to overturn the election were false and unsupported by the evidence. And yet, despite all of these specific warnings, President Trump and his team moved willfully to attempt to halt the peaceful transfer of power, to halt the constitutional process for counting votes. Today, Mr. Chairman, we address two specific witnesses who have refused to appear for testimony. Mr. Scavino worked directly with President Trump to spread President Trump's false message that the election was stolen and to recruit Americans to come to Washington with the false premise that January 6th would be an opportunity to, quote, take back their country. This effort to deceive was widely effective and widely destructive. The committee has many questions for Mr. Scavino about his political social media work for President Trump, including his interactions with an online forum called The Donald and with QAnon, a bizarre and dangerous cult. President Trump, working with Mr. Scavino, successfully spread distrust for our courts, which had repeatedly found no basis to overturn the election. And Trump's stolen election campaign succeeded in provoking the violence on January 6th. On this point, there is no doubt. The committee has videos, interviews, and sworn statements from violent rioters demonstrating these facts. Mr. Navarro will also be a key witness. He has written a book boasting about his role in planning and coordinating the activity of January 6th. And yet, as the chairman noted, he does not have the courage to testify here. We have many questions for Mr. Navarro including about his communications with Roger Stone and Steve Bannon regarding the planning for January 6th. As a federal judge concluded last week, quote, based on the evidence, the court finds it more likely than not that President Trump corruptly attempted to obstruct the joint session of Congress on January 6th, 2021. Our committee will continue to litigate to obtain the testimony we need we have already defeated President Trump's efforts to hide certain White House records behind a shield of executive privilege. As the court in that ruling said, quote, under any of the tests advocated by former President Trump, the profound interest in disclosure advanced by President Biden and the January 6th committee far exceed his generalized concerns for executive branch confidentiality. That same conclusion should apply to Mr. Scavino and Mr. Navarro. In a time when my Republican colleagues, many of them, are seeking to minimize the events of January 6th and putting politics above their oath of office, there are many other Republicans our committee has heard from. Many Republicans in state houses, state agencies, at the Department of Justice, and staff in President Trump's own White House, who continue to demonstrate a firm and unwavering commitment to their constitutional obligations. These men and women are models for the American people. They are the kind of public servants our nation needs. Men and women who know our institutions don't defend themselves and who recognize the obligation that comes from holding positions of public trust. We live in the greatest constitutional republic in history. No citizen in our republic can be a bystander. If we do not stand for our freedom and for our constitution, we will lose them. In his ruling last week, Judge Carter put it this way, if President Trump's plan had worked, it would have permanently ended the peaceful transition of power, undermining American democracy and the constitution. If our country does not commit to investigating and pursuing accountability for those responsible,
The court fears January 6th will repeat itself, close quote. I urge my colleagues to support this resolution to move this contempt proceeding to the floor, and I yield back. Well, thank you very, I want to thank you both very much for